Hello everybody again, welcome to the second part of the tutorial on how to make a Panther G tank in Garry's mod. And I just filled in the interior with the the engine, which is the 23 liter petrol engine, which is the Maybach HL230, which the Panther had. Uh, a straight transmission, I'm using automatic, otherwise by playing it, uh, while playing it, you won't have enough keys to actually run it all by yourself. And a transaction. Actually, I could have only got a, a seven-speed automatic transaction that the Panther was uh, able to uh, rotate on the spot. But now I was looking on how to make the wheels. And I was actually looking on how can I do it, because the wheels are actually pretty large, the tank is quite big in scale. But uh, I have no choice, I'll use the S-Props uh, wheel sprocket as the sprocket here, more or less centering it. And then for the wheels, uh, I wanted to use the 35 wheels, which are a little larger than the model ones, but I think that uh, I will still do better by using the wheels 30, make them uh, a little bit bigger with the physical model to account for the track width, and just sorta interleave them in a, in a more beautiful way that will uh, will help me use way less props and have something much more stable and playable in the game. So let's get started. Okay, one thing to do is I want to place the wheels uh, in a very perfect fashion because this is a German tank, of course we should use, we should use precision alignment to place the wheels. Those messy values, I'm pretty sure that a German engineer will not like something like that. So, so this will probably be a 105, this is a 52, this may be a 12. Let's take a look. Alright, I think I got this. Let's not point you on this wheel. Let's look at some values. This is, should be 52 and should stay uh, as 52 maybe. Oh no. Yeah, kind of. Okay, let's grab this stalker tool. This is the fastest way possible in order to minimize errors in those wheels because the interleaving distance is the same. Let's take a look. Oh yeah. And for the first time I'll do the interleaved wheel design. I cannot place the wheel in there accurately by hand. Uh, this is kind of messy, but okay. One, two, three. Time to mirror everything as we did earlier with the armor. There you go. Now, by holding shift and right-clicking the props, it should do the last 
action that you did in precision alignment. Alright. Okay, before starting to work on the wheels, I always uh, align my tank or car, whatever, uh, on the origin mark. Because uh, if you already worked on cars, you know that uh, bell sockets do not work uh, at their maximum. If you uh, if you let the wheels rotate on a on an axis which is not the X one. So uh, I used to carry around with me uh, a dupe like this one that told me the how to align everything but now on S props if you go on miscellaneous uh, you can get this thing here which is kinda useless by, by its own but if you if you rotate it in the zero angles not related to entity but to the world see where's the where the Y axis is so we're gonna rotate uh, our tiger that way, but but to rotate it, I mean, get it before spawning. Let's go to offset. Yo, yeah, it's yo, and 90 degrees. I'm sure you got basic math, and you know that 90 degrees is a right angle. All right, and you useless. Go away. Okay, so have fun removing your old tank now. And save. Alright, what do you want to do with wheels? There's a tool which is called Make Spherical. And you can like click a wheel and it will make it spher spherical. Alright, like this. You just click and it becomes spherical. But what I want to do with those wheels, I'm I want to check how how they get spherical. Like I mean, because uh, basically we're changing the physical box of those wheels. Now, if one wheel behaves like this, like a real wheel, you're gonna encounter some problems in Garry's mod, which is the wheels sunk sink in the ground. And that that sucks. If you make them spherical, you'll see that now they are they don't look like but they are perfectly a perfect sphere. And since they do not have edges, they do not sink in the ground. And as I can see, as props wheels already count those that track with that you're gonna have under the wheels. So let's use make spherical and click every wheel. By clicking with the left mouse button, you're gonna use the default, uh, like the like a sphere as big as the model dictates. If you're gonna use the right click instead, you can specify the radius here. Which may be useful in some circumstances. It it was certainly useful for me. Okay. Since this tank is gonna be 45 tons, I'm gonna use two base plates. This is my first base plate, and I'm gonna weld it to my second base plate, which is the roof plate. Which is good, actually. I'm gonna also weld the engine here and the transmission and the other transmission. Alright. Oh, forgot to knock light then. Knock light all multi is a very good tool, I recommend. Click the props, right click them to make them without collision with any other props, but they still collide with the world. Okay, axis center tool. This tool was not very easy for me to find a download to use in single player, but if you go on a server, uh, 
you for sure find it because it's a very useful tool otherwise to have a perfect axis in the middle of your prop in your of your spherical properties in this case you will use precision alignment and making axes with precision alignment is uh, time consuming let's say so let's make axes with this prop and the last one I forgot the sprocket remind me later There you go, sprockets. And to make the wheels more stable on a dual base tank, bell socket center, simple bell socket. We duplicate it without using shift keys. Alright, the wheel works, but they have collision of course with, with each other. So what I don't like to do is is remove collisions uh, completely like using no collide all multi on the wheels. I don't like it because wheels should have collision with other tanks, with props, etc. How can you take a speed jump if you don't have collisions on your wheels? So, no collide to the stock one in Gary's mod. First wheel, second wheel, second wheel, third wheel, and so on. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. There you go. Do you rotate wheels? Yes, you rotate. Okay, how to check if I did miss any bell sockets? Well, let me remove the base plate. Okay, every wheel has bell sockets. How do I check if I did miss any access? Just remove the top plate. Yeah, everyone, every wheel has access. Yeah, I'm getting pretty good, huh? All right, what now? Hmm. We should make the turret rotate then. Ah, uh, but that's kind of difficult. How do you make a turret turn? Well, there's a tutorial of mine you can check out in the channel. I'll see if I can put a link in the video now. But I'm not sure. Actually, I did spot an error here. Fix it later. And what do you do? You need a turret ring. How big is this turret? Let me get some some good old measuring stick tool. This is the most underrated tool ever, I think. I use it every time. 81, distance 81. As easy as that. I like to make the turret ring a shape of actual rings. So, where is that? Geometry? Yeah. 60, 70. Okay, let me just try to randomly fit it in the center of the prop in the center of the top base. Yeah, kinda like it. Yeah, and yet not sure if it should be completely centered or like offset like this. I think that offset is... Nah, make it center. Alright, we have our turret ring. What to do with the turret ring? No collide with everything. And axis to the first base, bell socket center, second base. So it should rotate now. Let's hope so. Yeah, yeah, it does. 
and it does it pretty good. I cannot stand this error. Please stand by, I'm gonna fix it. Alright, here I am again. I did fix that weird issue. It was about visual clip. Yeah, I still don't like visual clip that much, but it's the only way to make good stuff to work. Okay, so I'm gonna like follow my tutorial that I said. I'll try to put the link in the, in the video, also in the description of the video, of course. And I just want to play some points here. Oh, actually, I think this is a much better value. Oh, yeah. Yeah, German precision at its finest. Okay, so the white point, let's get 40. The gun is not very heavy. Point number two, I said. I thought I said point number two. 40, uh, let's try 60. Raise it. No, too low. Okay, let's check if the gun behaves properly. Looks like. I need to remove the collision between the plate and the gun. Actually, the gun is roped only to the base plate, but if the gun is light, if the gun was like 120 mm, I would like to do two more ropes for the top base, but I think this will be fine. Let me get the knock light to knock light the gun with this, yeah. And we, we have to make this ring rotate as the gun do does. How to do that? Well, well, socket advance comes the rescue, but I don't like this tool very much. I I had much better experience using the precision or easy precision. If you go down general tool options, you can enable the advance mode and in the advance mode you have advanced pulse socket. Just remove move target, rotate target, those are uh, those are super bad. Freeze target, yeah, it's good. Knock light targets, I don't know. Align toward, very bad. Entire contraption, very bad. Force break point zero, torque break point zero. X rotation minimum and maximum. Yeah, minus 80, 180 means uh, free rotation on the X axis. Yeah. Free rotation on the Y axis. There you go. No. This was free rotation on the Y axis. And Z rotation. Zero and zero. That means that the Z rotation is fixed. But what is Z? Let me get the useless thing. Z is the north one. Well, this may not be a north but a Z. If you look it sideways, yeah. And uh, now everything makes sense. All right. So where's the precision? Yeah, we like clamping the Z from the gun to this circle here. What happens if I turn this one? Oh yeah, the gun turns as that one. Actually, now it broke. But who cares? It does. Oh, shit. Alrighty. 
one thing that I forgot, did you saw that the wheels were like spinning freely? Yeah, that's not good. We need again to use the precision advanced ball socket, but this time we're gonna clamp the the x-axis. Like this and freeing the z-axis and the y-axis from this wheel to the sprocket, this wheel to the sprocket, this wheel to the sprocket, this wheel to the sprocket. In this way, if your sprocket gets removed from the game, the tank will not be controllable, which is what it actually should should be. I'm just checking if I did ball socket every wheel because this this design is really really terrible. I suggest you to do like standard wheels like I did on the Tiger. I hope that I did a standard design on the Tiger. Yeah, all right. Time to put everything together because if I duplicate it, and of course I do save it, and I'm freeze it, yeah, this is not going to work. We have to put the armor together. For this uh, we'll use uh, something of wire, it's called gates. It's uh, it's a technique. I'm not sure what it's called, but it's something like wire parent or gate parent. Uh, it basically consists of putting gates uh, on your bases, and instead of uh, instead of parenting things to to your base directly, you parent things to the gate, and uh, as a consequence of a bug which has turned to be a feature you can change the properties of the parented stuff if you didn't do that sometimes it doesn't work if you didn't wire parent or whatever I told you I do it and my tanks work my tanks work if you don't do it everything works that's good But I'm not responsible of your PC blowing up. Okay, I'm not. I'm going not collide it. I'm going to weld it to the bases. And let's get the multi-parent tool. What I do with the armors? Remove contraint. No, no collide. It's useful. Weld. No. Disable collision. Yeah. Set weight, of course not. Disable shadow, yeah, I strongly suggest you to dis disable the shadows. I usually do the knock light. If you do things properly, this will make your tank uh, behave much better with the physics in game. But if you don't, this will really help to make everything laggy. All my tanks that you find for download use that option turned on so I do not collide it and you can check if you do that because when you want to copy everything you will be able to dupe it just by a right click if you don't not collide if you do not check this you you have to uh, you'll have to uh, use the area duplication you see if I do dupe like this I do get the armor but I do not get the turret. Well, it's not parented, but it will be the same. I will have to do the area duplication, you see. Okay. Let's go on. Stop talking. Actually, I want this smaller gate.
Uh, I'll just forget those two plates. Uh, I'm gonna find a way later. Like I need to put a another one here. All right, I should do it now. Actually, I'm gonna use this one for for a counterbalance of the gun. Alright, it kinda works. What I want to do now is what they did in reality. They did balance the gun. Either they did balance it by balanced it by using springs or counterweights like I don't know why the why in ACF the mass center is like here, but like the bridge will in reality is the most of the weight Th that's why in real times the bridge only exposed so little because it was so heavy and and everything was okay so let's get the weight too loud and let's try some weights for the, this prop this is decent 250 It's much more that, uh, that I will have liked to do, but who cares? Who cares? I don't. You do. Go away. Last thing for this video is armor. I did check the original Panther armor and we're gonna use the ACF armor property tool with ductility zero as for now. And I'm gonna set the real values 85 in the front, 65 in the lower places. Then we have something like 17, it was very variable at the bottom, 17 at the bottom. Then we have a 40 the back. The sides were also 40. And the inner sides also 40, yeah. That, that's the beauty of using visual clip. You only have one plate here, one plate there. Uh, this piece was 17. Yeah, very weak point, I, I see. And the top was also 70, yeah? Yeah. And this is the second top plate. The man plate is 170. Then we have a 100 front uh, turret plate. Uh, those pieces, I just say they are 10. Those pieces are purely visual. Possibly they had armor values, but I just don't know. The sides are 45. Forty-five. I think this is also sides. The rear of the turret. Oh, 45, yeah. Top of the turret, 30. Now, I don't know why the top of the turret is much more armor than the, than the top of the tank, but I can see the point. If you got air strike, either they hit the engine, that's bad, but okay, they, they hit the turret, or, or they hit the crew compartment. And the crew compartment is distantly protected by the gun and, gun and the turret itself. Did I forget anything? Let's press R. 
the the weight of this thing is actually 30 tons which is reasonable because I'm gonna add the ammunition it's gonna rise at least two or three tons so now since I know that German armor was uh, a little bit better than allied armor we can just tweak a little bit the values but it's a replica I'm gonna keep the ductility at uh, the ductility at zero so I'm just gonna make 90 some slight changes to make the tank more fun to play Th that sort of stuff the sponsors here 45 Well, it's 30 for now, but uh, for sure we're gonna add some details, add some plates. Uh, I'm gonna also do the, the skirts, etc. So the tank is now kind of armored, and see you on the next tutorial where we're gonna make this thing uh, move by itself. Oh, just one thing save. Don't forget to save. And let's see if this moves. Yeah, it does. And I did forgot to parent this thing. I'm gonna fix it now. Don't forget that you can get more information about this on the website, which is linked in the description. You can download every save snapshots from this and the previous tutorials on the link in the description and also in, on the link in the description you can see all the all the other video tutorials and also download some already made tanks that I did like the like the mighty tiger